If I was to assign a formal log boot, which I think is the best looking combat boot, it is a garrison style boot. Okay, these are garrison boots. These are Canadian garrison boots. They're also called paratrooper boots from the Second World War. If you're looking for a showy boot that you can wear to the punk concert, or if you're gonna wear out downtown or something like that, these boots look amazing when polished properly, but if they're not polished properly, you look like a skid. Okay, so if you're gonna put the effort in, you wanna put the effort in on these boots. Now, the problem here is to get a mirror shine on these, we look back at the toes, and although the toes both look better now, the judging of the boot is done by the toe. So, oh, look at all the pits and marks and everything. Hmm, what do we do? Well, you polish it at this point, you repeat the process. You take your lighter and you do it again. Now, you've got these boots, you've got this coating on them. Where do we go now? The refrigerator. If you're doing a major, major boot resto, quite often they'll warm them up on low in the oven and they'll put the boots in it before you even begin the procedure. Heats the leather, lets them suck in the polish. I usually find that if you've had new boots that are, that's for boots that are really far gone, like holy crap, they're trash. You can do that. I've never let a boot do that, go to that stage. When you're healing all the holes, you smooth it out, and then in order to let it harden faster, you put your boots in the freezer and you let the cold work their magic with the polish. After they've been in the freezer for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, the polish should be pretty hard so when you brush it, it won't move around so much. And you can keep filing on it. Just really light brushing as though you're like polishing glass. Right, now to get a glass shine, that deep glass shine, you need a new kiwi cloth or an area of a kiwi cloth that has not been touched. You take the cloth, you take two fingers, you pull up the cloth over your fingers like this, so it's hanging over these two fingers. You take the cloth, you, cloth, you twist it. You take the cloth then, wrap it around your hand so you hold it in place, that's how you hold the cloth. You take the ice water and your new can of kiwi polish. You've got the boot clean already. You've got a new clean piece. There's no dust to scratch the finish on the actual boot itself. You dip the two fingers in the cloth. Now, it won't absorb, so you have to pat it on the back of your hand. Okay, you've got to pat it on the back end so you can feel the water. You see how it's wet there now? A little bit wetter than that. Get this to a certain dampness where you touch the side of your face, and it shouldn't leave residue on the side of your face. It should just feel damp. Right now it's too wet. I'm leaving stuff there. Okay, the reason for that is just the right amount of water that's cold causes the polish to solidify quickly and it provides lubrication for the wax on your fingers. Now you don't press hard, that's the thing. You put a little bit of wax on, you go turn on your headphones and put on Ministry and then you play a song from Ministry's box set called Fucked, okay? And then all you do is you start on one side and you do little circles the same way over the whole boot. Not too heavy, not too soft, over the whole boot. Okay, now I've got a ton of polish and a ton of water. So what are you gonna do? Well, we gotta work the water off. How do you do that? You do circles. You continue to do this for an hour. Okay. Now, when the circles start getting, uh, like you can't really see them, widen the circle and go over larger areas. But this is right near the end where, you know, you got it turns into a real polish now. Now you're like doing what you think you do with like, think of your polishing like fine china. Okay, so now that we've got all the circles gone, we've worn it in, we breathed on it last few strokes to get it down. Okay, good deal. That looks like it's getting a bit of a shine. Great, so now what? You do it again. Okay, now we've gotten it to the point where you know you're, you're putting like microscopic amount of water on there to shine it on. When you dry it down, you get to the point where you got the air point. So and and, and send this. So we're just going to show you where we're at right now. This is a good spot. This is where I'm usually at when people go. If you put the boot on this here now, okay. I don't know if you can see that. How's that coming through on the tape? That look okay or what? Okay, so that's that's how you do a boot. Okay. And now you do it to the rest of the boot and the other boot, and both shines have to match right, otherwise you look like a clown. So the question is, what is a wog? What, is, what does a wog do? Like why, what is a wog, how does it happen? Now there's a Scientology version, what, what the Scientologists called wogs is, is like a, a slur. It was originally it was a racial term that they would use for undesirables. 
is what a wog is. But uh, I've taken the term wog and I've kind of run with it here. I think that wogs are people who are live by their own codes and actually have codes that they choose that they don't answer to anyone. And they're independent, so they're like a ronin, you know, like the old samurai, the masterless samurai. So that's what a, a wog is, a ronin, but it's not, he's not a violent man. Violence is horrible. Anyone who knows anything about violence will tell you that. So, yet he's, in a way, he's a seeker and a peaceful warrior. So I'd say that a wog would be a ronin of an exploration-based culture, not a capitalist culture. Because our culture we have here is capitalist, and it's, it's fucking everything up. You know, this is, this is the world here. This is what the world looks like. This is what Earth looks like. This is it. Right there. This is the area we live in. I mean, it's, it's raining and it's wet, but it's, it's beautiful and there's life everywhere. But we focus on these crazy little cities and, and we're destroying the planet. And nobody seems to dig that, you know, maybe we've got a higher purpose in life without getting into, you know, psycho religions and Jesus wants us to blow up Israel and, and whatever, you know? I don't think I, there's a whole lot more to the planet than just Israel. There's a whole lot more world than Middle East. You know, there's people dying all over Africa and everything. There's all kinds of shit everywhere. Now, Charles Fort, you know, the guy who did 40 in Times, he, he was this amazing dude who thought up that, that science, as we understand it, was actually mind control. He thought that there's so many things that happen that are paranormal, that don't fit into science, that science is wrong, and it's wrong on such a fundamental level. Like, what if magic was real? What if I could prove that there was a Bigfoot? What if we could prove there were dinosaurs that were walking around? Does that mean science is wrong? Well, yeah. Does that mean the, the Christians are right? Well, no. That means something else is right. And being a wog means you're afraid to face that, so we seek the truth. That's the purpose of being a wog, is to seek. You're supposed to find knowledge, and knowledge is power. And we use that for the greater good of everybody. And that's why we wear the get, and all the, the, the gear and the kit and the setup. So no matter what happens, we're ready for it, and we can help people. This is the concept of why we do what we do. What I intend to do is I intend to find, get to the bottom of a lot of these things. I want to seek knowledge and take you on the trip with me. I want to go out there. I want to go find Bigfoot. I'm fucking am going to do it. I live in BC. I've got all the gear. Why not? Nobody's done it properly. They've never run a proper alert mission for a Bigfoot. Never happened. But in order to do these kind of things, you get the real answers to really go for yourself, to look for yourself, to ask the right questions, and then have Sumerian film it so I can give it to you. No one's done that because everyone wants to make money with it. I'd like to make some bucks too, but you know what? I got a nice little house. I'm all right. I can live like that for a while. But I think it's kind of bigger than that, you know? And, and, and I know it's... Anyone who knows anything about filming and sees what we do will go, yeah, well, they're... They're not making money, and they always ask the same, why are you doing it? Why are you, you're not making any money, why are you doing it? Well, because we want to make a difference. And it, the only way we can make a difference is by taking these ideas, these concepts, this mental virus, and giving it to you so that you can adapt it, and you can go do what you want with it. But Because no, if you adopt the ideas and techniques of logs, you become a log and become part of the solution, not part of the problem. And then we can really start to do stuff. My name is Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. So you say you gotta know why the world goes around And you can't find the truth in the things you found